next speaker is from uh, Poland, and uh, my pleasure to invite here on our online stage at this particular moment, Joanna Kapla Masztafiak, uh, Assistant Professor, Institute of Nuclear Physics, Polish Academy of Sciences, Krakow, Poland, and uh, Joanna is going to speak on complementary use of laboratory and free electron X-ray sources to study metal-based complexes. So uh, we are full attention to you, Joanna. The floor is yours. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we hear you absolutely wonderfully. And you can see my presentation also. Yeah. Either. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. Um, thank you very much for the invitation and thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I will tell a little bit about our research uh, with the use of laboratory and free electron X-ray sources uh, to study metal-based complexes. Uh, I'm representing the Department of uh, Applied Spectroscopy of the Institute of Nuclear Physics, Polish Academy of Sciences, where we use X-ray spectroscopy to study uh, biological samples, like for example DNA and the interaction of metal centers molecules with some bio uh, material. Uh, but we also study the chemical systems, for example char charge transfer processes, uh, and also some fundamental physics research uh, like nonlinear interactions are also studied. Uh, we use uh, all kinds of uh, X-ray instruments, uh, for example, at the laboratory X-ray spectrometers, uh, synchrotron sources, uh, but also free, free electron lasers. Um, and uh, next to the application of these sources, uh, we also develop uh, some new um, instruments, uh, absorption and emission spectrometers, sample delivery systems, and, and so on. So this is what we do. And now, uh, firstly, I will show you about our uh, laboratory spectrometer. This is a new instrument uh, that uh, started um, its work uh, a year ago. Uh, as you all probably imagine, that was a very hard year for us, but we still managed to do some commissioning and start uh, some scientific project uh, on this uh, instrument. Here is a, a general scheme uh, of the setup. So uh, the design um, is constructed the way that you can do absorption and emission uh, simultaneously. It is based on two um, uh, von Hamos spectrometers uh, with two diffracting crystals and two CCD cameras. Uh, here you can see um, the picture of the instrument uh, during the operation. Uh, this is uh, the uh, absorption spectroscopy um, experiment uh, with uh, X-ray tube with polycapillary. Here is the sample holder. Uh, so the X-rays go through the sample. They are diffracted by the crystal and analyzed by the CCD camera. Uh, and uh, here is the second CCD camera ready for the um, emission um, spectroscopy studies. Uh, so here are some preliminary results uh, from the um, measurements of uh, solid samples. Uh, this is the iron uh, K-beta um, emission and iron KH uh, absorption. Um, two acquisition times are visible here on the spectra. Uh, as you can see, after 20 hours, so um, in general, after one day of measurements, uh, we get a very smooth, very nice spectrum uh, with uh, all the features visible uh, and even with these uh, details uh, that are not so intense, uh, you can distinguish all of them. Uh, but in biological studies, that is, mine, um, that is my uh, main um, field of interest, and in chemical studies, uh, you, we want to study liquids. Uh, so we also develop a, a sample, um, a liquid sample delivery system that was developed by our uh, now PhD student during his master thesis. And uh, this is a very nice design uh, with uh, a quartz cuvette cut by half, 
Um, and you can measure also uh, um, liquid samples in a liquid jet, let's say. Um, these are the, here are the results. So the spectrum from uh, zinc oxide uh, in a liquid form um, studied in our lab uh, is compared with the synchrotron data and with theoretical calculation. Uh, so you can see that um, the, the shape is uh, pretty much the same and you can also distinguish all of the details and all of the features that are important during the analysis of the uh, absorption spectra. So that was uh, the commissioning, but we also started some scientific project already. And one of them is the project um, that is funded by National Science Center in Poland. The studies on the interaction of uh, copper-based complexes um, with DNA by means of X-ray uh, spectroscopy techniques. Uh, why do we want to study these complexes? Uh, because there are some limitation of the popular chemotherapeutics that are used nowadays, for example, cisplatin. Uh, cisplatin is uh, highly toxic, so it gives a very severe side effects. Um, but also we observe some primary or acquired resistance to this drug. So it is important to develop new compounds. They can contain platinum, but platinum is quite expensive. Uh, so we are also looking for other uh, elements like, for example, copper. Uh, what we are studying uh, is a set of uh, copper and phenantrolene based um, complexes with different structures. And uh, if we study new compound in, uh, in terms of uh, potential chemotherapy, uh, we want to know if it is cytotoxic, so if it kills cells, but we also want to know what is the mechanism of action and what is the um, a link between the mechanism of action, the activity and the structure. So these are the chemical information that we can get from X-ray uh, absorption. And here are some preliminary studies. That was um, also a master thesis of uh, my now PhD student. Um, uh, here are the spectra, the absorption spectra of different copper samples, uh, among them uh, the phenantrolene copper um, complex. Uh, so you can see that with uh, the laboratory source in laboratory condition, you can easily distinguish uh, the oxidation state of the compound. You can also uh, see very nice shape of the spectrum so you can tell something about the chemical structure. And uh, if you combine this with uh, theoretical calculation, uh, you can get the information about the electronic structure, so about the density of states. What are our future perspectives? Um, uh, we would like to, of course, uh, do uh, simultaneous absorption and emission experiments of our biosamples. Uh, we would like to study biological samples uh, in a liquid form. Um, this is quite important, but these samples are in um, usually in very low concentration, so this is quite a challenge. And actually, this week, uh, this uh, this measurements um, are performed, so we hope that we will get into um, very low concentration of the samples. Uh, and we also like to have a bio lab on site, so we can study not only um, uh, not only the interaction of drugs with DNA, but also the interaction of drugs with living cells. And uh, here I will show you the example of our uh, studies uh, done on a free electron laser. Uh, so free electron lasers um, can uh, be um, used for um, mainly for three types of experiments. 
single shot experiments uh, where you need a lot of photons in a very short pass. The pump probe experiments uh, where uh, the short pass uh, allows us to measure fast processes uh, and also in a non-linear X-ray uh, experiments. So uh, this is um, types of experiments where you can really benefit from using free electron laser. And of course, during these experiments uh, and during all experiments with hard X-ray, you can expect uh, some uh, radiation damage of your sample. To some extent, every sample is, a, is damaged by X-rays. Uh, of course, we know how to reduce this effect now. Uh, we can use liquid jets, um, sample circulation, cryocooling techniques. Uh, or in case of um, EXFO, we can do the um, experiments in a probe before destroy uh, methodology. So uh, the challenge of X-ray radiation damage is, is well recognized, but uh, rarely studied uh, systematically. So our experiment was pe performed on the uh, linear coherent light source uh, at the XPP station. Uh, with the uh, above um, iron K edge, we measured um, X-ray emission um, signal with also with von Hammer spectrometer um, on the hexa cyanoferrate uh, sample uh, in a uh, aqueous solution. So that was our sample. Uh, the pulse length was uh, thirty femtoseconds. These are the experimental conditions. And uh, what we get, uh, so our signal, it turns out that our signal is changing monotically um, with the increased photon flux. Uh, so that was the observation. Uh, and uh, we start um, analyzing the, these results. Uh, we um, started with um, Analyzing photon absorption uh, of this solution, it turns out that most of the uh, events result in uh, oxygen photoionization in the solvent. So, based on energy and time dependent calculation on electron interactions, uh, it was proposed that after the um, after the uh, X-ray uh, radiation goes in, it interacts with the solvent. Uh, then there is a generation of energetic electrons. And then these electrons impact iron ionization. So it is a, you can say, three-step process. And then what we get is a signal of the uh, iron um, K-beta emission. So in the time of 13 femtoseconds, uh, this highly uh, we, we get a highly charged state molecule, but with preserved atomic uh, position. So to sum up this experiment, <coughs> excuse me, uh, we can say that this X-ray photons uh, induce uh, solvent ionization firstly and uh, um, leading to the formation of the electrons and these electrons lead, reach the nearest uh, iron atoms in less than one femtosecond and this leads to the ionization and increase uh, iron oxidation state but without affecting molecules atomic position. This is a very important result in terms of performing uh, experiments uh, on samples embedded in solution or in matrices uh, because uh, you always need to think not only about the interaction of X-rays uh, with your studied um, complex, but also with the solvent. So what about this complementarity? Mm, uh, there are many advantages of using laboratory setups and free electron lasers, of course. Uh, but if we think about it uh, as a whole, uh, we can say that in case of laboratory setup, we have a constant access uh, at home institution usually. Uh, this was very important uh, before because the time um, 
from the application for the beam time uh, and to the experiment was quite long. But now it is even more important uh, because if you can go abroad or uh, you need to stay at your uh, institute, um, you still have an access to the experiment. Uh, but with the laboratory setup, you can make a principal analysis. So the chemical structure, the oxidation state of your sample, uh, and also the um, electronic structure uh, of the complexes. And in case of the processes, you can define the initial and uh, final state. And what was also mentioned today, uh, it is important to make a very careful feasibility studies. So this can be done uh, at the laboratory setup. And uh, in case of free electron lasers, uh, of course, they have a unique X-ray properties and uh, exceptional temporal uh, resolution. So we can study the phenomena that uh, are unavailable to study with, uh, with the conventional sources. And so to sum up, using both approaches gives us the opportunity of this detailed sample uh, analysis. And, and of course, I would like to acknowledge a um, few institutions um, that were involved in these studies. Uh, and I would like to thank you for your attention. Um, and I'm happy to answer uh, your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joanna. And uh, thank you also for the pictures in the presentation to get the full scope and, and the sense of science in your country. And the question is, you mentioned that the time is uh, pretty long from application until the experiment within the home institution. Then the question is, could you come and uh, comment on the timetable from applications till experiments overall? So what I mean by this time uh, was um, the application for the uh, beam time at the central uh, facilities. So at the synchrotron and at the free electron lasers. Um, uh, that was already mentioned today that it is about uh, sometimes even nine months of, uh, of waiting from your proposal uh, to the uh, to the experiment. Um, in the case of uh, laboratory setup, um, of course, we also have a timetable in our lab, uh, but this is usually within uh, within few days or in, in the worst case, a week, let's say. You mentioned a lot of bonuses and, and pluses to laboratory setup, the home institution. Are there some negatives or minuses to this? Uh, yes, of, of course, the minus... Uh, for sure is that you can study very, very low concentrations. And sometimes uh, if you have a um, um, very small amount of your sample, uh, it is difficult to, for example, in case of liquid sample, uh, to get a lot of solution with high concentration. Um, so so that, that's the main, uh, that's the main um, minus, I would say. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much and wishing, yeah. wishing you luck in the future researches. Uh, uh, Joanna, thank you.